It's been a long time since I've looked at one of these anti-rock and roll documentaries, so it makes sense that I'd choose one as long and as epic as Hell's Bell's The Dangers of Rock and Roll. This is a religious anti-rock film that's apparently so well known that it's sold as the original classic. Unlike all those cheap knockoffs, I'm looking right at you, Doorways to Danger. Hell's Bells has so little to say, yet takes a full 180 minutes to say it. This is a five-part presentation that has magically figured out a way to play loud music while simultaneously putting you to sleep. The film comes from writer, producer, director, star Eric Holmberg, a man who looks like he's just dying to tell you about his Allman Brothers band collection. Eric is the founder of Real to Real Ministries and the Apologetics Group, and is still going strong and just as crazy today, where his blog includes the question, how low will our culture go, about a cartoon series, on the same page that features a defense of Roy Moore and a positive review of Hillary's America. Apparently Big Mouth would have been better if it had hologram clansmen and slave rape. The first part of the film is on the dangers of rock and roll and begins with a warning about containing explicit material of a sexual and occultic nature. Well, yeah, have you seen this channel? If it didn't have any of those things, I probably would have just shut this off. With it not being suitable for children, I ask, who is this made for? Because it certainly isn't adults. Okay, I guess kids can watch it because the next screen says that parental discretion is advised in that you should probably tell an adult if someone is making you watch this documentary. The opening is edited like someone is channel surfing in the middle of the night. I think this movie may have gone to the high top school of you're not cool, dad. <laughs> Whatever happened to real music? Man, I'm talking the good old days. Yeah. Move it along, black kid with boombox. They're just doing their part and making music great again. And they may be making meth. I'm on the highway to hell. <laughs> hey, don't stop yeah. me! Good thing they're not singing that in a shower or I'd be tempted to throw in a toaster. This list of music clearly means that all of these songs are literally about hell. Metaphor does not exist in this dojo. Do you think ACDC's Highway to Hell is about life on the road as a musician? Oh, think again. It's obviously literally about driving a car into the gates of hell. Naturally, it is also against sexuality of any kind, as it throws in a knock towards LaToya Jackson being in Playboy. As if these two don't secretly jerk off to the wind. I think I know this dance. It's called Business on Top, Party in the Bareback. I didn't know that I would be signing up for sketches when I watched this. The hideous, bizarre Egyptian curse of the lyrics to the latest Iron Maiden hit. Uh. I feel like I'm watching laugh in without the laugh part. I knew they would bring up the time Mick Fleetwood was possessed by Satan. What is wrong with this man? I don't know. What's wrong with you? You're acting like you're possessed by bean dip. Is this just a good time or is there something of a deeper significance going on here as well? Yeah, the deeper meaning is that him rubbing his belly means he's in the mood for Twinkies. Rock really has inspired everything, as we see in this clip where the Rolling Stones inspire future hilarious David Letterman bits. But okay, in three hours, what is this documentary supposed to show me? To the heart of rock and roll, you'll discover what it can do to an egg. Uh, I... What? Okay, eggs aside, it also focuses on the effects that rock and roll has on suicide, depression, and rebellion. Oh, he's mad at rock and roll because of all those things. <laughs> Just wait until social media comes along. And here's the man himself, Eric the Cable Guy Holmberg. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope and pray that you'll get something good, maybe even life-changing out of it. Well, I always am looking for new ways to make eggs. But, I mean, they're not trying to get you to hate music with this series. Please understand that nothing personal is intended here against anybody. 
I don't hate these artists. I'm not trying to say that God hates them. They just want you to set your Jimi Hendrix albums ablaze like he does his guitars. With this monitor in the background, my ADD is killing me. I don't know which Foxworthy to look at here. If you feel lost, it's probably because you are. If we find something that looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, and acts like a duck, then shoot. We're just going to have to call it a duck. Ooh, he said the S word, and I hesitate to find out what Twisted Sister is going to do to that duck's eggs. We find out exactly what the Bible says about rock and roll. Thou shalt go up to the spirit in the sky. It's where you're going to go when you die. This dude looks like his own mustache and bad hair filters on the face app. But again, it's not about trying to get people to hate rock music. So don't anybody worry. We're not trying to control what people listen to. I mean, they're not trying to censor anyone, really. It's just that God hates Falco. Plus, Eric at least knows how to play a record backwards. Consensus programming is dangerous to your health. The brainwashed do not know they are brainwashed. So they're just warning us about anti-rock and roll documentaries, obviously. There's a segment here showing the Hun singer Phil Tolstead and how he was arrested on obscenity charges, plus the amazing revelation that rocking too hard will have a reverse effect and turn you into a hardy boy. Rock and roll is a lie, and that lie almost killed me. Unfortunately, Phil was never seen again due to death by pixelation. He got out just in time. Here's Angus Young literally being possessed when he's on stage. The documentary, of course, plays Hell's Bells, where its title comes from. And sure, you may think the song was made to honor the passing of the band's former lead singer, Bon Scott. But nah, I'm sure it's all about Satan's Bell Choir. This is edited confusingly. When they keep showing different artists with their names at the bottom, it comes across like all these bands contributed to the lyrics of Hell's Bells. And even rock affects fictitious characters. Oh, wow, that really happened. So, uh, don't use a faulty sound system, I guess? And how dare they all be successful? Its superstars have annual incomes that easily eclipse those of all but a handful of the most successful industrialists and businessmen. I mean, yeah, that's a lot, but it's not televangelist money. Everything marches to rock and roll, including the soundtracks to movies. I've been saying for a very long time that the opening of Beverly Hills Cop would have been more effective with the singing of Blessed Assurance. Rock influences everyone. Well, almost everyone. Unless you are deaf, it's virtually guaranteed that rock music has affected your view of the world. Right? Deaf people have no clue about what music is. Kind of ironic, showing this clip from the wall when this is probably how kids would act in a school that would show this documentary. I feel like Eric has kidnapped me, put me in his basement, and is giving me this lecture. I'm still very fascinated. It will throw you out a damn window. Thanks a lot, Marty McFly. The warnings about music trace all the way back to Plato and even Aristotle, both known for being Team Hagar. Plato's contemporary, Aristotle, noting that music has the power to form character. Clearly they are talking about the power that Yakety Sax has on making anything hilarious. And even quotes Vladimir Lenin as saying one quick way to destroy a society is through its music. But that was before Lenin found out that through music is how we get a balanced breakfast. The egg test proves that a crowd will magically appear right in front of you. Can midway through the concert become a hard-boiled snack for the weary headbanger? Does anybody have any salt here? Dad, my friends and I are trying to rock. We get it. Lenin said I am the walrus. Go away. So, what did the egg test prove? Well, the... Things can be loud, I guess. It even affects flowers, too. Repeated experiments have shown that plants respond positively to classical forms of music. Point. I do have Beethoven to thank for my garden outside. Way more than I can say about my Who albums. While this may be true, I don't know why it makes rock evil. More dissonant forms of music, like heavy metal, can actually retard growth 
and even kill the plant. Yeah, and if you dump a bunch of bricks on the flowers, that'll probably kill them too. So you're gonna build your house out of water then? Aside from seeing the most rockin' means of execution ever, negative rock and roll effects are proven in a lab. Rats have a much more difficult time learning to pass through a maze if they are subjected to hard rock music. Yeah, and if rock music is blasting while I'm trying to study for a written exam, I probably won't be able to concentrate. I still like Bon Jovi, though. This just in, loud music, not for every occasion, except for movie soundtracks. We manipulate people like crazy. Every film composer mixes his experiences with a talent for musical manipulation. Also, more breaking news, a good soundtrack can improve the tone of a scene. Coming up next, a great actor can improve a character. But being thrilled by something is bad. They found that the most powerful stimulus for evoking thrill-like sensations in their subjects was music. Well, wait till the rush you get when listening to the Scorpions while on the Scorpion. They even got a problem with David Crosby. You have listened to Turn, 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 right? I'm guessing you'd probably be okay with that one. But maybe not, because rock is more serious than drugs. Music is used everywhere to condition the human mind. It can be just as powerful as a drug, and much more dangerous. Oh uh, yeah, I'll never forget the day I OD'd on Corey Hart and died. Excuse me while I get girl happy by snorting this entire record up my nose. Doesn't get too much more rockin' than Joni Mitchell. She deeply believes in a male muse named Art who lends her his key to what she airily calls the Shrine of Creativity. So... You know those hymns you sing in church? They kind of do a lot of the things that you're describing, but I'm guessing you have no problem with them since they are influenced by God in their writing and not a muse named Art. This section gets into the five realities of the spiritual world, or whatever drugs Eric is on. Number one, the real reality is a spiritual one. Wait. A spiritual one or THE spiritual one? Again, I don't want any imposters here. We see how man is a spiritual being whose primary purpose is to know and experience God. Okay, so do you or do you not want me to listen to Eric Clapton? There is no more profound way to be drawn into and then express this experience than through music. You know, you yourself are using a soundtrack to elevate that scene and to get me to buy along with what you're saying. Which is that through sin, man fell apart and was separated from God. Especially if you have Susie and the Banshees in your heart. On a positive side, this documentary is introducing a whole new generation into some rock and music that they may not have heard otherwise. And that's with Jesus trying to save the world from music about S&M. Into this hopeless situation, God sent a Savior, His own Son, to pay the penalty for our sins. You know, Jesus is probably Kenny Loggins, right? Shit, we're on number five of the spiritual world realities. We're still going with this. And I think Satan may have done a number on your font size there, and your video quality as well. <laughs> Not like I'm one to talk. As well as bringing them into greater bondage and control. For by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. Yeah, things look much more evil when you re-edit them to look like FMV content from a Sega CD game. This NXS footage is way better. Sure, you could say that it's a song about how people can be two-faced with some good and bad inside of them, but it's definitely that we are all possessed by Pazuzu. Why else do you think Satan was kicked out of heaven? And it's worth noting that both the scriptures and church tradition suggest that music comes quite naturally to Satan. That very possibly before his fall, he was in charge of music in heaven. Duh, everyone knows Satan was kicked out of heaven because he wouldn't stop playing Gangnam Style at the heaven rave. Look, once again, Eric is of course not trying to say anything bad about rock music. This is all just scientific. Satan's proven tendency for overachieving has resulted in a blatancy that when examined by an objective inquirer can be used to expose a devil's presence and purposes. Sounds objective to me. Can't wait to hear his thoughts on hologram Dinesh clans. 
Something tells me that before this gets into the second part, he already has his mind made up. And one last point before we begin to dust rock music for Satan's fingerprints. Hmm, whatever happened to innocent until proven running with the devil? As it says in 2 Corinthians, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So, Satan is the Christian rock band Petra with their song, Angel of Light. I'm getting very mixed signals here. I'm just surprised he dropped the Hitler bomb as early as part one. Don't be fooled. Satan doesn't just manifest his power through a Hitler or a Manson. He can use your favorite guitarist, a pretty pop singer, maybe even you. Yeah, yeah, Hitler may have killed millions, but when that ended, Satan had to go to plan B, which was causing the clash to ask millions of children, should they stay or should they go to church? The second part of the documentary has to do with the root of rock. I'm guessing that's where we find out it was rock and roll that cracked the Liberty Bell. Until then, I've got a carton of eggs and a stack of Survivor albums. <laughs> Daddy's making omelets. We'll explore Rock's relationship to sex, your head, your life, and your eternal soul.